So in previous videos, we created a bootable 32 meg hard drive. We created a splash screen, which you can see there. And we've, you know, learned to navigate a little bit in ProDOS. This time, I think what we're going to do is we're going to put together a low res splash screen and reskin the 32 meg hard drive. So we'll use ProDraw system. And fortunately, I've already drawn up a picture suitable for use on YouTube. A nice little play button there. As you can see from the border, most of it's already programmed into the graphic. You don't have to draw the border or the picture or the text at runtime. It's all done for us by creating the picture previously in ProDraw and then converting it to a format that the assembler understands. So that's what we're going to do now. We're loading it, we're going to PR number one to start the printer, and we're going to list out the, you know, that's actually the picture there in hexadecimal op, uh, not opcodes, but hexadecimal uh, notation. So PR0, shut our printer off, we're done with the Apple for now, and we'll open up the printer, which for Apple Win is a file called printer in the uh, Apple Win directory. So you can see now we've printed out our low res screen in hexadecimal uh, notation, and we don't need the beginning or the end of this stuff for what we're going to do. What we do here now is we get rid of all the line numbers that the the disassembler has put in, and I'll speed that up because it gets pretty boring to watch over and over and over. So we'll just speed that up now. Get rid of all the line numbers because we're going to convert this to a format that the assembler understands. And now that we've done that, we'll double up the lines because we got the room in the assembler to have 16 hexadecimal uh, numbers back to back. So now we've done the meat and bones of our conversion. We just have to format it by replacing certain things. In this case, we're going to get rid of the dash and we're going to put hex because that's what the uh, assembler expects. We're giving it hexadecimal, so we've replaced all those. Now we're going to get rid of the spaces and we're going to replace those with commas. Now we go back in and we change the hex one last time to space, hex, space. So when we cut and paste this into the assembler, it will take it and no errors. Now we highlight everything, control C, copy. And we're done with the printer for now. We can go back into the Apple II. Boot up the Apple II, navigate to our drive that has Merlin on it, which is the assembler, Merlin 2.58, that we'll be using. Set our prefix to disk drive D slash source. And we're going to load an old splash screen that I made yesterday called U-Boot. What we're going to do is we're going to modify this source uh, to accept our new picture. Because it already, you know, basically it does everything we want in a splash screen already. It scrolls the border, it checks for lowercase capability. And... Uh, yeah, it makes development much quicker when you just poach your old code and reuse it here and there. So a little scroll through the assembler, just have a quick look at the code. Everything looks pretty good. I mean, we know it works. We've assembled this code before and it worked fine. So here is our actual screen data. This is the actual picture in the assembler notation. We're going to get rid of the old one by pressing Control D, and then here we're going to press Open Apple D to remove entire lines. I'll speed this up. Now we're ready to press Shift Insert, and that will take what we've Control copied, Control C from the printer that we formatted previously, and that'll put it into the uh, assembler for us. So again, here I'm going to speed this up gets pretty boring watching hexadecimal numbers get written to the screen. Make some joke about how I can type really fast, but really I'm not. It's doing that with a cut and paste. So now we know that our new screen that we just viewed in ProDraw and converted via Notepad from the, the monitor uh, listing into basically the actual picture hexadecimal, We'll go up and we'll edit our source comments at the beginning so we know what we've got now. And I spend entirely too much time figuring out how to write YouTube in the comments. 
up here. That's where all the asterisks are. That's comments in Merlin Assembler. So where it says U-Boot, let's say, oh, well, well, we'll call it YouTube. That eh, looks good, but I want some lowercase. Okay, it looks good, but it's not spaced out properly. Let's put a space there. Yeah, entirely too much uh, time writing YouTube. Now nah, we'll update the date because we want to keep the date current. So now we press Apple, open Apple Q, ASM, and that will assemble our routine that we've just added the new picture to. We took the old picture out, put the new picture in. And now, as you can see, the assembler is running through its paces, assembling the routine that we've got in memory. Get to the picture, and it just puts down a whole bunch of hexadecimal bytes into the uh, into the assembly. And we should be done soon. There we go. Symbol table. And now we save. Um, unfortunately, I overwrote my previous source file U-Boot, but that's okay. Uh, I can always go back and change the picture in it again, just like we've done here. So let's go have a look. Go back to source, run our binary U-Boot, and there you have it. The screen is animated, the border scrolls, the, um, you know, the picture's, I think, pretty beautiful. <laughs> but that's because I drew it. So we now copy this to our new hard drive that has the old splash screen, the double high res splash screen, we're going to replace that. So we copy from D source, and we find our picture, U-boot, there it is. We copy it right over to the slot 7 drive 1, which has our slash YouTube drive in it. So now we can see there it is. All right. So we'll organize the catalog, and we'll do a reboot, and we'll see what we get. We can rename it, I guess, too. Yeah, let's rename it. YouTube, because YouTube rocks. Okay, now let's reboot. Quit, quit. Navigate to YouTube Drive. Hit ProDOS. Oh, no, we still get our double high-res picture. Why? Well, because YouTube's just a binary. It's not a system file, and ProDOS will chain the next system file that it finds. So let's make it into a system file. We'll do a catalog. And we will create YouTube.System, comma, type sys, T-S-Y-S. Then we load YouTube at a string 2000, system files load at 2000. And then we B save the pro draw, or sorry, YouTube.System, a string 2000, length 1375, and type sys. So now we've actually got a system file there. But what's going to prevent this from showing? Does anyone know? Well. We've got to organize the catalog so that YouTube.System comes right after ProDOS.System. So we'll sort the catalog, ProDOS, YouTube, Splash System, Basic, and we'll go with that. Now we can delete the old file YouTube binary. We don't need it. We have it as a system file. And finally, we'll lock her up. Finally, on a reboot, to the YouTube Drive, ProDOS, we get our splash screen, animated border and everything. Press any key, takes us to Bitsy Buy. So if we do a catalog, you can see everything's the way it should be, and uh, we're pretty happy with that.